All right, so I'll give you the old three, two, one. So three, two, one. All right. Good morning, SGDQ. Are you ready for the disaster adventure? This is Trag Tactical Rescue Assault Group Mission of Mercy, A.K.A. Hard Edge Perfect Program: The Disaster Adventure. I'm just playing Trag though, but you got to say the whole name. So, the way this game works is you have multiple playable characters. First two I have being Alex and Michelle. Alex is very, very bad. So, first thing I do is switch to Michelle. And right now, you have to talk to this elevator, and you have to talk to a stairwell in the back of floor one. So, the elevator's right here, so I talk to it now. And then we just go to, stair we just go to the stairwell, and we move on with the game. So, what's going to happen here is Alex and Michelle are going to split up. And the little gimmick for this game is that puzzles on like floor 26, the solution is on floor 25, etc. So you would have to switch between Alex and Michelle to progress in the game. Fortunately, the puzzle solutions are always the same, so I can just do one floor at a time. And the floor I'll be doing first is 26 with Michelle. And the reason I do that is because floor 25 has a character who, is, who has fast running speed, whereas Alex does not. And Michelle, she is the fastest character already. So I have her do 26 by herself. Really just... So, it, you know, I stagger the characters who are fast to save time. It makes sense. So, standard, you know, PS1 tank control -y game. You run around some halls, open some doors, run past enemies. The huge. If you've seen a Resident Evil run, you know, you've kind of sort of seen Trag, but Trag is a lot more action-packed. Not to say that Resident Evil is boring, but this is a whole other level of excitement. Look at this. Look at these, pu look at these puzzles. You press two statues, the desk opens, you get a key. That's great stuff. That's good gaming. So this game is not a survival horror game, despite su superficially resembling Resident Evil and the like. It's more of an action game. It's kind of like, the plot could be best described as uh, anime diehard. So right now we're in the Togusa building, which is kind of a uh, not exactly Nakatomi Plaza, but you know, it's, it's Nakatomi Plaza. And we are the members, we are the members of the TRAG, the Tactical Rescue Assault Group. And we are here to rescue Professor Howard from the clutches of terrorists who have taken over the Togusa building. Why they've done that, we will find out soon, because this game does have a series of unskippable cutscenes. You can skip a lot, you can skip most of them, but some of them manage to s squeak in, they stay in the run, and it's good stuff. Hello? Alright, there you go. Solution to the safe is always 052. The solution is on floor 25, but previously stated, solution is always the same. Now you saw a little bit there, I got stuck on a, stuck on a wall, and that is an issue in this game. The controls are bad. I'm good at them, so it's not an issue being me. But someone else, a lesser skilled gamer, would have issues. One of the prime issues being the walls in this game. If you, t like, if you touch a wall at a wrong angle, you're just in the wall and you have to wiggle your, wiggle your way out. So you really just want to avoid walls as much as possible. And of course, it is t very awkward tank controls that some people don't like. Me, I'm all about that tank life. So to solve a magic square there. That's the, any solution will work, but that's the one the game gives you, so I use it to respect the lore. 
So we're gonna come into this room, and we're gonna turn the uh, the power on for floors 26 and 25. Because we need that. This would be an alright time to sneak in a donation. Alright. We have a $100 donation just came in from Cyclohexing. Hey. Awesome to get to see Caveman play some Trag at SGDQ. Really hyped up for the run. If the Cassandra fight goes flawlessly, I'll donate another $100. Wow, on the list of donations that aren't happening. That one. We'll get to Cassandra later. But right now we have, uh, we've got the first unskippable cut, actually the second, but the first one didn't really count. We gotta talk to my main man, King, here. We have to rescue him from this bad guy. Yeehaw! Take a step back to, uh, Michelle has to walk to that point, so I try to get close to it as possible. And uh, let's enjoy the game's voice acting. Do you have anything belonging to the man who died? No, don't think so. Wait a minute. He left this behind at the bar. You can have it. Maybe it'll come in useful. All right, we got key card A. It will, in fact, come in useful, as King put it. Now, excuse me, but I'm gonna hide. now version differences. Uh, the English voice acting is notorious, so I played the Japanese version, wondering what the Japanese voice acting is like. It's the same. It's the same as the English voice acting, with one exception, being Michelle. In the Japanese version, Hard Edge, Michelle's voice actress is different, and that's the only difference. But Michelle's voice actress in Hard Edge is real bad. She's so bad. I don't know what happened during the transition between Hard Edge and Trag, but my headcanon is that she was so bad that in the localization process they completely dubbed her over. And that was the one change. Uh, Trag also included an ability, an option to completely turn voice acting off. I don't know why you'd want to use that. It doesn't save any time, fortunately. But it's there. Also, um... Trag is easier to play than Hard Edge. Uh, the turning radius is wider, so actual movement is easier. And enemies have less health. Alex starts with more ammo. It's just, this is the definitive version of Sunsoft's greatest hit. This is a Sunsoft game, by the way. Sunsoft is uh, being a favorite developer of a lot of speedrunners. They develop a lot, of, a lot of classic games, but this, this is the best game they made, IMO. It's the only one I play, so... Oh, come on, Michelle. Come on, Michelle. Come on, Michelle. There you go. Got a little sliding block puzzle here. Try to dodge this enemy. Nope. That guy's kind of rough, but, you know, whatever. It only did, like, a little bit of damage. So I'm going to ride down this elevator down to a room in floor 25. Not floor 25 proper, just a room that happens to be there. There's gonna be an enemy, we're gonna knock him down with our moon kick. So, the attacks in these games. So every character has a series of attacks. They have their normal, you know, you press square, you get a combo. But you also have back square, which is a power attack that does the big damage. And you also have, like, a uh, flash kick and reverse flash kick, which do various things. That, uh, the moon kick being reverse flash kick, and the reason I use it is because it's faster than doing the power attack, and I don't need to kill the enemy, I just need to get past them, so... I kill, what, like... four enemies? Five? Throughout the whole run? I mostly just walk by them, or knock them down. Now, this cutscene is skippable, but uh, I'm gonna watch a just a little bit of it for uh, <clears throat> RNG manipulation. It's a good cutscene. It, it introduces one of the greatest characters in video gaming. So as you can see, our heroine Michelle is in peril. But fear not, for a knight in shining armor has come to the rescue. Here he comes. Oh, he's so strong. He's so strong. Who is this man of mystery? 
All right, that's all we need to see. That's, that's, the, that's the manipulation. So that was uh, Burns. He's a private eye on the beat looking for Professor Howard's daughter, Rachel, who uh, we'll find later. She's also a playable character. But Burns, despite being the best, is uh, very slow. So it's, you know, you don't see a lot of Burns action in this game, but he's there, don't worry. And we couldn't beat the game without him. Literally, you do need to use all four playable characters at least once throughout the run to beat the game. So that's good, a lot of variety. It would have been better, you know, maybe if you could skip some, that'd be good. You know, maybe uh, maybe I don't need to use Alex one day, who knows? Get some new runners, get some fresh blood in the Trag running scene, which consists solely of me at this moment. And hey, who knows, maybe you'll crack the game wide open. Maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. You could be the next, the next member of the Tactical Rescue Assault Group. So, we had to get that rope. At least I think I got the rope. I'm kind of on autopilot here. But we needed the rope to trigger the first boss. If the boss doesn't trigger, we didn't get the rope. We got the rope. All right, good. So, first boss of the game is a big red scorpion. Why he's here, you know, I skipped the cutscene, so you'd think the big red scorpion is introduced in the cutscene. It's not. You just kind of exit out of the cutscene, and there's a big red scorpion. Perfect. If this goes well, this was a perfect Big Red Scorpion fight, and it did, so it was. I'm glad I got that. That's kind of a hard trick to get. So uh, the Big Red Scorpion is nice because it's one of the only bosses without a significant RNG determining its pattern. You can manipulate its pattern based on how you move, and I moved in such a way to walk it into the corner so that it can't escape and walk all over the arena, which is good. That's really ideal. And killing it in three cycles is the best you can do. So I'm glad I got that. So take a trip, a quick trip into the D room, go to floor 28. And uh, there some peril will befall Michelle and Burns, and we won't be able to play him for a little bit, so we'll switch on over to Alex. No, maybe squeak in a donation. Why not? All right, for this run, we had the donation incentive of killing the optional bosses, and that has been met. So thank you, everyone, for meeting that donation incentive. I didn't, I didn't know that got in. That did get in. All right, so uh, time to bust out the top secret route that I totally practiced, because I uh, thought that donation incentive was not an option. So here we go, optional bosses, good stuff. So, floor 25, we'll deal with the optional bosses when we get there. That is a bridge we will have to cross, but not yet. So floor 25, we start off as Alex, and we have to run into this room right here. And we got to do some sick movement here. Look at that, sick movement. You have to go through this room three times, so that's a good trick to get good at. And you have to talk to this little uh, like power slot. So you know that you, when you, I have to find a battery, but if I just find the battery without knowing that I need to use a battery, I won't pick the battery up. So now that I know that I need a battery, I can get the battery. And that's the only time, that's the only puzzle in the game that's like that. Alright, let me just do this real quick. I, that's not a memorization, that's just Simon. But I do need to concentrate a little bit on it. Alright, so now... The best character in any game, the first lady of the PlayStation Nation, Rachel, my girl. I love you, girl. All right, so Rachel is very overpowered in this game. She has a lot of unique features that she has that no other character has access to, such as a counter. Rachel and Michelle can both block, but Rachel can actually counter enemies if you, like, parry them. And that does a lot of damage. She's also the second fastest character in the game. She's just really good. She has the lowest starting health, but I'm not, I'm not going to get hit, so hey, it doesn't matter. She also has uh, unique abilities to combo, which hopefully I show off. I'll, ex I'll explain it in depth when we get there, but I'm, I'm pre-gaming you. Expect a combo to come, and it's going to blow your socks off. But right now, we're just running down some hallways, you know. P just PS1 things. We got another sequence lock up here. This one's a little harder than the first one, and that if I miss it, I have to do it again. So let's not do that. Mm -hmm. 
Epic. That's like the one thing I wanted to get right in the run. All right, there. Second time every time. So we gotta talk to this dead scientist and he's gonna give us a medal. Throughout the game, the early stages, we have to collect a series of medals to, uh, to play a juke box. It makes sense in context, kind of. But we need the medals. We can't beat the game without them. So we're gonna, once again, go through this room and get the battery. We need the battery. So this is the third and final time we'll be paying a visit to these two uh, Spider-Man looking dudes. My stream viewers have come up with interesting names for uh, that particular enemy, but I think Spider-Man is the one that I could, you know, reasonably share with the marathon proper. Now, we're gonna remember to go into this room. I haven't been remembering to go in this room for quite a while. And we need to get something. I don't remember what, a card, probably? But we need it. So let's do some more optimal play here. Look at this, look at this. That was an eight. Optimal is nine, it wasn't very optimal. But don't worry, we're still good. We're still on track. So we're just running around. We've been, I've been opening doors to construct a route to easily facilitate my movement through floor 25. So that sequence lock that I expertly opened in the first try <laughs> earlier, I can now use it to go through this door without using the battery on the uh, little skyway thing. So just running, 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 running. And in this room is where we use the battery, and that's where it will remain for the rest of the game. So just do a uh, AOE attack to hit those two bombs and then block the explosion so you can run away, run through the explosion. Because you get some invincibility after you block some. And I use that to run. You do a lot of running in this game. It's mostly running. It's a perfect speed running game because that's all you do. You run quickly. So we're going to sit in a chair. We're going to press start. We're going to be in a different room. Don't worry about it. The chair followed us. It was a secret chair. There's a dying guy here. There he goes. He'll be fine. There's no reason to check up on him right now. We'll do it later. If we check on him now, all it'll do is give us an extra cutscene, which we don't need. If we do it later, we only have to talk to him twice instead of three times. This is the mine room. It's a... Uh, it's not a good room to get stuck in. And then this is a cutscene. Enjoy. Daddy! That's far enough. Out of my way, or the probe gets it. I love his voice. It's so good. You? Are you deaf or what? I said out of the way. The laughs are so good in this game. There's two more coming, so keep an eye out for them. All right, so that combo I was talking about. Rachel uniquely has the ability to cancel her forward dash into her attack chain, and she can also end her attack chain with a forward dash, so you can get an infinite loop, like so, hopefully. There you go, perfect. I'm glad I got that. Two out of three tricks I wanted to do. So far, so good. Oh, got stuck. Okay, that, will, that could have been bad. The worst thing that can happen to you in this run is getting blown up. Because it knocks you down and does a big chunk of damage. So you want to try and avoid that whenever possible. Which isn't really an issue, but sometimes a stray explosion will knock you down, and that's not good. Alright, so Dying Man, we're going to check up on him finally. 
Uh, long story short, he died. But he does have a medal, fortunately, and that's good. So his sacrifice was not in vain. Because now we can listen to the jukebox. And the jukebox is pretty important. You can read a couple donations while I go to the jukebox. Alrighty. We have a $50 donation from Sam Gordon. Hey guys, can't believe I nearly forgot about SGDQ this year. So here is my, hopefully, first donation for what looks to be a great lineup. Donations go to the couch's combined choice. Happy gaming. The combined choice? Squid. Squid for uh, American Wasteland. Oh, Mufin's totally going to beef it. <laughs> All right, so we found Michelle and Burns. They fell down from floor 26 to floor 25, and they were hanging out there the whole time, I guess. But uh, we start as Burns. We switch from Burns to Rachel, because Rachel's faster. Michelle is out of commission for a while, so we're going to have to rock it without her. Otherwise, I'd use her, but it works out to be slightly faster to leave her there. So we're going to go to floor 26 and get the system disc, which is just like the thing you need. It's the plot item of the game. It's what the game is about, the system disc. And it's hidden in the jukebox. And now that we have enough medals to play the jukebox, we can get the system disc. We don't know we need the system disc yet, but I know. And now you know. But Trag does not know. But it's convenient that we can get the system disc now so that when we need to get the system disc, we already have it. So there's another dead guy in here. He's got the last medal. And conveniently enough, he's right next to the jukebox. Now the jukebox is cool because as this game has New Game Plus, and the further loops you go, the more songs it has, you can eventually get the entire soundtrack of the game on the jukebox. But we don't have that yet. We do have Error. So there's a song called System Disc, but the System Disc's over here. I don't know why. It's funny. So we're out of there. That's all we needed the jukebox for. And now we can start kind of the boss rush part of the game. Most of the game is bossy now, and I need to remember to actually do something so that the donation incentive gets met. Because this next boss, uh, Gashu, you would have met him in a cutscene had I let the cutscenes play out. If you kill him with burns, that's it, he's done. But if you kill him with any other character, you get an extra boss. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill him with an extra with, uh, with Rachel. I would, normally, I would use Rachel to just whittle him down to where burns can easily kill him with one or two hits. But we're just going to go full Rachel this time. That's what I like. And Rachel likes it too. She's going to do a little dance for us. Look at her go. She's ready, I'm ready, are you ready? We're all ready. Are you ready, viewers, prospective donators, for this wonderful marathon? They're ready. All right, so uh, Gashu. This is where the bosses start to get a little random. Rachel's DPS is based on her counter, so I have to rely on the boss actually wanting to hit me. Like so. Not all three hits always connect. Sometimes he'll roll out of the third one, which is convenient because the third one's the most damaging one. But he's being real nice right now. So I wait for him to attack, I parry him, and if I get the third hit, I do the knockdown. All right, so he's in the laser eye phase. Named so because it's the phase where he uses laser eyes. That was an incredible fight. That was really good. He didn't roll. He rolled a single time. That's very lucky. So you get that extra cutscene, and Gashu will be back. Normally, he just fades away. Oh, boy. I'm glad I get to share this part with you. This, must be the fuse. this is the infamous bomb defusal scene. We have to push a lot of buttons. But I screwed up with it and blew up a building. Oh, dear. All right, so this solution is random, so I have to check it each time. I mean, I don't. I could just guess, 
but I'm defusing a bomb, so I'd prefer to play a little safe. You're really going to press it? Are we gonna press it? We have to make double sure that we press the right button. This is a bomb after all, very scary stuff. This button should release the cover. Sure looks that way. You're really going to press it? Are we gonna press it? We need to make sure, all right? This is a high stress situation. Hey, pretty good RNG. This button should release the cover. It's nice when it goes all in a row, one, two, three, zero, like that. Are we gonna press it? Saves like a second. Next one. But which? All right, the zero. I already know it. It's the only one left, so I don't have to check. Alright, that's the cover completely off. Don't have to press any more buttons. Just sit back and enjoy some dialogue. Stay cool, Mr. Byford. All right, all right. That dang blasted Gashu. Which way is it? The solution is left, but it's faster to pick right first. I don't know why. Well, I know why. You have to pick left twice either way. But if you pick right first and then left, you can just mash right. So it's like faster just because of that. It's not like a trick I'm doing. So, uh, this is when Hexane's <laughs> maybe hundred dollar donation is gonna come into play. The next boss is Cassandra. She is probably the most problematic boss in the game. Uh, she is a little random in that she can take anywhere from 30 seconds to forever. Forever would be rough. Uh, she can also instantly kill me sometimes if I uh, mess up, so I'm not going to do that. And she's going to it's going to go swell. We're going to get $100 for Doctors Without Borders, right? That's going to happen. So if you want your professor, bring the system disk. We already have the system disk, so we don't need to go get the system disk. It's good. Oh, check out the sick movement. Check out the sick movement. Are you, you want, you're watching this? All right, so you, you take a single step, and then you run. Look at that. How optimal. And now we have an amazing cutscene. This one is just choice. Nah, that, that was that was an original caveman. So there's Professor Howard. There's Cassandra. And there's some suspicious looking drapes in the background. I wonder what that's about. Hand over Professor Howard first. Don't give them the disc! The troublesome little <gasps> drapes appear on it the was a villain again. the whole time. It wasn't draped at all. Miguel. And it's Miguel. They've met before. In the game proper, this is the first time you see them, but everyone already knows each other, so we don't need to introduce more characters. I'll go. Here's the disc. It's really bassy when he walks in these headphones. I like it. <gasps> he betrayed us. What an evil guy. Here comes laugh number two. Get ready for it. I shall become ruler of the entire world. So good. That's my ringtone. Give me a call sometime. I love hearing it. So Miguel's already gone, but Alex is a little slow. Hold it right there, Miguel. You must fight me first. 
So, Cassandra time. The game's default choice to fight her is since Alex and Michelle are the main characters and I have Alex, the game's gonna default me to Alex. Alex is an interesting choice in that his main method of dealing damage is with guns, and uniquely this boss is immune to bullets. So, get wrecked if you're playing this game for the first time and you think Alex is a good shot for Cassandra. No, this is a real man's job, and it's time for Burns to show us what's up. So, here comes a, uh, a fight. Hundred dollars is on the line, Cassandra. Behave, please. And before she kills me. So... The idea of this fight is to knock her down and then hit her with the Justice Hammer, which is the name of that attack, on her wake up. And uh, that didn't happen, so we have to deal with these guys. So rip a hundred dollars. <laughs> but that's okay. Don't worry. It'll go well this time. It is, in addition to being very precise, it's also completely random what she does on her wake up. A lot of her options are just completely invincible. That was amazing. That was a really good fight. I think that's worth at least $50. She only gave me one bad attack, which was the worst attack she could have given me where she spawns enemies, but I'll live with it because she didn't kill me, which is good. So game starts us off as Alex. Again, Alex is bad, so we go to Michelle. She's fast. Michelle's just kind of like the mule of the run. We just pick her to run the places. We do use her to kill the last two bosses, but for the most part, it's the Rachel show. Uh, I'm gonna do a little little walking around, so this is a... You got maybe like three donations, four donations? Who knows? Yeah, we've got that. We have a $150 donation from that guy, 114. It says, shout-outs to everyone in the crowd. We have another... $20 donation from Drunk Canadian. Woke up and ready for the best run of the day. Good luck, cavemen. Also, Rachel, best girl. See, he knows. Keep going. All right. Have a $100 donation from Matt Razzler. You can always rely on a great run and funny commentary from cavemen. Everyone have a great week. Money to runner's choice. And a ten dollar donation from Jill. I don't have a lot to donate this year, but I got to pitch in. And why not during Trag, the little known sequel to Waku Waku Seven? Putting five dollars towards renaming the frog Iwata and five dollars towards naming Robo Iwata. Is that is that true? I've never played Waku Waku Seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the prequel to Trag. That's I need that in my life. I've been I've been wondering for that. Maybe we finally know. The origins of Michelle and Alex and Miguel. I don't think we do though. I think he was just being epic. Come on, Michelle, what are you doing? The game's I have to fight the controls. You don't really control the game so much as you like you pilot it, you kinda you ease it. The game goes where it wants to go. So, on Professor Howard's dead body, he had a roulette ball, which we decided to take with us for whatever reason. But we're going to use it. We're gonna play a little bit of roulette now, cause hey, why not? The stakes are down, so let's gamble. Miguel's got the system disc. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. That was some good movement. It's really nice to uh, not get blown up by those... Okay, bomb poles. Come on, Michelle. Come on. There you go. Take a wide berth around that enemy. She is a tank, after all. All right, so we're going to play a little, little bit of roulette here. Why not? You absolutely need to do this to beat the game. Because you actually hit a zero, and that opens up this door. I don't. It's a pretty convoluted system of doors the Tagusa building has, but... Hey, that was a good movement. You have to do this room twice, and it's always nice to do it like that. Alright, so there's a vent here, and Rachel, being the special snowflake that she is, is the only one small enough to fit. She's the only one who can fit, but the characters... The whole party somehow follows her through there. So I, c I could switch to the other characters now if I needed to. So I don't know why specifically Rachel needs to climb into the vent, but I'm okay with it. Alright, I missed my first counter, but that's whatever. Dang. The only glitch I've found in this game is if you open if you press that switch on the frame that this door thing happens, the uh the camera locks and you can walk through walls and stuff. 
but you're you're still confined to do the cell, so you really it doesn't help. But it's cool. It's cool to do. It's a frame perfect mistake that costs time, but it's fun. I didn't get it though. It's too bad. It's trivia. That's what it is. Next trivia night, you can tell them about the track trivia about the frame perfect tricks you can do in this game. So we left Burns behind to make a bomb, but he's already done. All we had to do was climb down that ladder and climb back. <laughs> We can't actually progress, so I don't know why I need to go through the whole ladder process, but this is a, uh, fortunately an unskippable cutscene. And here it is, an order made Burns bomb with anchovies and extra cheese. I think you'll find this will blast through that baby like a knife through butter. <laughs> so laughs in this game. It was a grim day in the recording studio. They couldn't get these guys to give a convincing light, a laugh to save their life. But I'm glad they tried. They put their best effort forward. I couldn't have done a better job. So we have a bomb now. We don't know why we need a bomb, but we have one, so we're gonna use it. But first we have to read this book. You can't beat the game without reading the book. That's why I read the book. So now that the book is read, we can beat the game. The book will come into play later. But right now we have to do a little revolving door of character switching. Just easy to remember who to use, just go to the right every time. Burns, his special power is the ability to move that one block. That's the only, like the box, that's the only one in the whole game. So good gimmick, Burns. Alex can see in the dark. Rachel is, she can cr crawl through small places. Michelle does not have a unique trait. She's just very strong. And you know what? That's, that's all you really need. So we're going to go back to floor 27. Kind of, this game's kind of labyrinthine. You have to really keep track of where you're going. You get lost really easily, which is why, as a kid, I loved the game. I thought it was mysterious. I was naive. I did not realize that there could possibly be bad games at that age, which explains my taste in games now. All of the bad games I'm sort of known for are games that, you know, they're not bad. They're misunderstood. They're gems from my childhood, just a more innocent age. And now they're the hottest speed games on the planet. So we're gonna do the hard room again. I'll reveal my secrets for any prospective track runners. What you do, you use a lock on, and you run at an angle like this. And then once you get here, you turn at an angle like that, and you just, you just squeeze right in through the bomb pole. Don't have to kill the enemy, real good stuff. So here's the door we need to blow up. It's convenient that we already have a bomb so we can get through there. And we're gonna go here. We're gonna go to get something we need on floor 25. It's right in here. Trigger the bomb pole to fall, and then while the enemy approaches, you do your uh, AOE attack, which has invincibility on it, to both negate the explosion and knock the Spider-Man down. Good stuff, real optimal. So you just turn a little bit there, run through that guy. And it's actually time for Alex to get uh, his glory moment. We have to use Alex twice. Both times involve night vision goggles and then immediately shooting something, so here it is. Night vision goggles, again, come in useful. I don't know what the localization team was doing, but I don't think people really say come in useful, but it's, it's the game's signature catchphrase. It comes up a lot. I wonder what it says in Japanese. I can't read Japanese. So, here's the one guy we shoot with Alex. And then we switch right back to Rachel. Good stuff, Alex. We've been collecting these little disengagement devices throughout the run. This is the second of three. And we need them to uh, open a door later in the game. This door, I actually didn't know this door was here until I watched, believe it or not, the Retsu Prey of Trag. <laughs> And the long player they were using used that door. I, did, I had no idea it was there. So good stuff, Retsu Prey. Thank you very much for making my speed game just a little, little more optimal. So we're gonna go back to floor 25, and we're gonna use that handle we got. We're gonna go back to the room we found Rachel as Rachel, and then go to a door that only Rachel can use. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. That's just the whole game in a nutshell. Get a little donation in there. I'm just gonna open up some. I'm gonna open some doors and press some switches. And then once the next boss comes, I will resume my, you know, 
All right. We have a $30 donation from LD. Good run so far, caveman. This is your boy, LD. Also have a $50 donation from Sky the Fox. Hey guys, these marathons make me proud to be a gamer. I haven't seen Pokemon Puzzle League in forever and would love to see it get wrecked. Thank, I thank the runners, sponsors, and everyone behind the scenes making sure this all goes smoothly. I think the crew off camera needs a round of applause. Are they going to get one? There you go. All right, so uh, donation incentive. There's actually a boss here. That get, it, he's labeled as a boss on his health bar, but he's kind of just a guy, guy, guy. Like, he's just a guy. I think he was supposed to be a boss, but got cut. But we're just going to... Oh, he's, he's too strong. Come on, come on. Jesus. There you go. Boss defeated. Good boss. I think he was supposed to be a boss, because I had one of my stream viewers rip the audio of this game, and there is some unused dialogue about a very, a very unpleasant robot, which that guy was. He was a very unpleasant robot. And I think he was supposed to be a boss at some point. He's still labeled boss. So he's one of the two bonus bosses, the other being Gashu 2. Speaking of bosses, another one coming up. First, we have to walk down this long flight of stairs. You having a good time? All right, so a long flight of stairs into unskippable cutscene. I don't like this one as much, but maybe you'll find it to your fancy. That sounds like a good deal. He's right. Without Volt's help, Miguel might just get away. See, Burns agrees. He's got a good head on his shoulders. Very dangerous. He's no longer human. It's an interesting thing for Rachel to say, and I'll explain why in a bit. So we're going to fight Vault, and Vault being a computer program, the only way to fight him is to go into cyberspace and defeat him. Now, of course, Rachel is the only character who can do that because, surprise, surprise, she's a robot. She was a robot the whole time. So this is a Rachel-exclusive boss, which I messed up. Normally, there's no RNG. Whatever. Good enough. We'll get this counter. Told you. See? There. Cool girls don't look at explosions. So that's Vault Down. Could have gone a little better, but we beat him. Whatever. He's dead. Good stuff. Good stuff, Rach. So, guess what? We get to use Alex again. Alex gets another day in the limelight. Like, like before, we're going to put the glasses on and then shoot an enemy and then switch to a different character once we're done with that. So right before we go into this door, we're going to switch to Alex. This game has New Game Plus, and in New Game Plus, Alex is actually the best character, surprisingly. <laughs> he just completely destroys bosses, but this is not New Game Plus, so he doesn't really destroy anything. 
So we're just going to take three steps forward, shoot once, and then do a charge shot, take out that enemy. And then we're going to switch right to Michelle. And then this is the Michelle portion of the run. We're going to stick to Michelle for the duration. What am I doing right now? I'm just, I'm just walking around. I'm going to go to floor 26 and open a door. So that's what we're doing. Have some donations. Alrighty. We got an update from Cyclohexang. He donated $50, <laughs> saying that was still a really tight cast fight, so I guess I'll settle for half the grand prize. There you go. Also, Miguel won hit kill hype. Oh no, please. He's trying to jinx me, so he is baiting me so hard. We also have another $50 donation from Ollie Wooly. Can I get a sweet trag laugh from Caveman? With this disc, I shall become ruler of the entire world! Ah ha 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 ha! There. I've played this game a lot. I know the lines. Get in there, Michelle. What are you doing? You got one more. Alright, well. We're on floor 26. Whatever. It's all good. We're gonna open up that door I talked about. Those disengagement devices we got and the book we read is finally going to come together. And we're going to open the door we haven't... I don't think we've seen it in the run yet. If we did, I messed up. So hopefully I didn't mess up and we haven't seen the door yet. But we're just going to run over here. Uh, once you beat Vault, the enemies in the game change. So the man hacks are gone. They've been replaced by Spider-Man. Spider-Man take a little more doing to get around, but it's still not an issue, really. Uh, this room became a lot more interesting, uh, whereas it once was empty, there's a large green scorpion in there. Uh, he's alright though, he doesn't really do anything. He's just, he's just there, he's a, he's a cool guy. No need to hit him. He's not gonna hit you, so why bother? So, hopefully, uh, I remember to get all three disengagement devices, otherwise it's, we're gonna have to go on an adventure. Hey, there you go. And that turns off this uh, zappy zappy door thing. Slowly but surely, it has to power down. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I heard Miguel in the background. All right. We've managed, once again, we've evaded the, the, the claws of the scorpion. So now we can go into uncharted territory. This is the home stretch of the game. This is the final area. There's not really anything going on in there. But, you know, it's the final area. So first thing, there is uh, this big enemy that drops down, and that's it. You just, you just do that. And you go over here. Make sure to turn to the right there. You got three cutscenes, you can skip all of them. It's sad that you can, because Brenham makes a surprise appearance again and you get to hear his squeaky voice. But some, some major plot is happening right now. There's a laser targeting the Togusa building, and the only way to stop it, we have an hour to stop it, which is convenient, because it'll, it'll only take me 30 seconds to get to the place that I need to go. But it's nice, that, it's nice to have an hour. Uh, if you if you uh, somehow don't find this room in an hour, you get the very bad ending where you get shot by an orbital laser. It's not a good ending. You don't want that ending. So there, 30 seconds, and we found this thing. Now Rachel, she's going to put her robot battery and pr she's going to generate a shield around the Togusa building to protect it. Now there is a invisible secondary timer that's going on from this point where if we don't beat the game fast enough, Rachel, poor Rachel, beautiful Rachel, will actually die because she's running on reserve powers right now. So, it's a race against time to save my girl. So, we're going to go down to the basement. By the way, this door, uh, it only triggers if you unlock it. Otherwise, it's not there. It took me a while to find it. So, we're going to go back to floor one, and we're going to fight the, actually, last three bosses since I did the Gashu thing. Who am I going to fight him with? Burns. That's who we're going to fight him with. Give Burns some more love. Hmm. Should get more health. Alright. Got, I've got an idea. I've got a plan. This will work.
That door, it says go to hold because be quiet. I don't know what that means. Does anyone know what that means? Sunsoft? Hello? Do you know what that what would that mean? Why does why does it say that? Oh whatever. Just drag things. So down to the basement and to start the final boss rush. So we got three bosses, Brenham, Gashu 2, and then the final boss, Miguel. Brenham and Gashu are not too big of a deal. They do have RNG, but it's like not really a factor in terms of how the fight goes. Miguel, uh, I've got a safety save for Miguel. That's just, we'll get to him when we get to him. So, Brenham. He can randomly decide to run around the arena, and that does waste time, but I have some things to deal with it, so I can only really lose like a maximum of 5 seconds per Brenham. If I do the fight right. But if he doesn't run it, okay, well, <laughs> never mind, he ran. So from running, he can do two possible attacks. That's the short one. So I can get a bonus hit off of that one, so it's not like an issue. Oh, he's running again. Maybe he'll do the long one so he can get three hits. Yeah, he did the long one. He's just demonstrating his patterns. Ooh, we got the double hit. Yes! I'm actually glad I got that. Like, bad time aside, that's a good trick to get. Oh, he wants it. Three runs. Again, not really a big factor in terms of time. Let's see if we can get the double hit again. Probably not. Nope. Good enough. Good enough Brenham fight. He didn't hit me. I hit him a lot. Good stuff. So there's a I'm gonna get a little top secret full health kit just just for just for safeties, just for marathon strats. For this boss that I definitely practiced. Alright, we found the first aid kit. Good, good, good. So we're gonna come to this door, we're gonna switch to Burns. Burns is the man with the plan. He's Gashu's mortal enemy. He came back from hell just to fight him. As he'll explain. Yo, look at this. This is so hype. Look. He does a thumb down. <laughs> Alright, so Burns. We're just gonna drop some Justice Hammers on him. Doesn't really matter. We can just we can just tank him. We've got the health. So, we, only, we need to hit him with nine Justice Hammers, it looks like. He can. Yeah, I'm really in no threat. Just the start of a justice hammer has a little bit of invincibility, so I can use that to avoid that last hit of the combo. All right, good stuff, Burns. There's uh, there's Gashu too. That, how's that for a donation incentive? We got two extra bosses. We we've, we've got all the all bosses category on lockdown. But we're gonna switch back to Michelle now for the real boss, the big boy boss, final boss. Let's see if we beat the game fast enough. That. That uh, extra Gashu fight might have given us the bad ending. Uh, nope, Rachel lives to see another day. We get the good ending, as long as Miguel doesn't kill us. Which he can, actually. Cyclohexane alluded that into... In a, he alluded that to that. He said that in his uh, donation comment. The boss can... He only has one instance of RNG. Uh, for, unfortunately, the random factor is that he can decide to instantly kill me. And I can use a glitch to avoid that if he decides to instantly kill me. But uh, I'd really just prefer if he doesn't. Just doesn't really mess with that attack. It'd be really good. Can I sneak my way into the little safe corner here? You know what? Whatever. I'll just. You want to spin? Let's spin. All right, so if he just bends over and lets me kill him, that's good. If he uh, if he doesn't, hey, that's funny, right? All right, good. He didn't instantly kill me, so we actually beat the game. Get ready on time. This last hit is time. So that was Trag. Our mission is complete. Actually, our mission was to save Professor Howard, which we've utterly failed. 
But our secondary mission objective, which was to save the day, we've passed with flying colors. We beat all the bosses. What was the time? Anyone know? Hey, that's not bad. That's pretty good. He's taking a while to explode there. And you know what? Hey, my estimate was 56. Let's watch, let's watch the final cutscenes to see the conclusion of Trag. Mission is complete. Barat here. Mission complete. Roger, Barat. Barat's his last name. All the characters have last names. Even the bosses. You too, Burns. Good work. Now, don't you get cheeky with me, young lady. I'll have you arrested. Bonus laugh. <laughs> Alright, and then f finally, to, to end the whole thing, bear in mind we were in the Togusa building for this whole game. When we beat the game, we were in the Hudson Bay. There's the Togusa building in the, in the distance. But yeah, we're in the we're out we're out at sea now. Yes, the CG is so good. I guess that just about wraps things up. What will you do now, Mr. Byford? I guess I could really use a holiday. What about you, Alex? What are you guys going to do? Michelle and I? Unfortunately, we've got no time to rest. We've got another mission waiting. Wow! What a beautiful sunrise! Yes, a happy ending for the greatest run of all time. So that was Trag. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want more, you can donate to get me to run Stretch Panic with Ion Gravity Ray later in the marathon. We'll be doing two players, one controller, should that donation incentive gets met. But if you don't like me, just, just don't donate to something else. But yeah, that was me. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for allowing me to run. Yeah. All right. And that was Trag Mission of Mercy. Shout outs to Caveman DCJ for that exceptional and entertaining run. Next up, we have Tony Hawk's American Wasteland being run by Mufin. Be sure to stay tuned for that. Should be a really entertaining run. We have a tiny video coming up if you guys stay tuned, watch the video.